Whales are some of the most extraordinarily fascinating animals on our planet, and their incredible evolutionary history contains some pretty strange and intriguing chapters. This includes the times when highly predatory sperm whales lurked in the waters of the Miocene, hunting down other prehistoric whales, penguins, and even giant marine sloths. Today, the sperm whale represents the largest toothed predator on the planet, and along with the pygmy and dwarf sperm whales, they are the last surviving members of the great superfamily Physeteroidea. However, in the past, this group of whales was actually far more diverse and common, with a certain selection of these animals evolving to become what have been termed macroraptorial sperm whales, creatures that preyed on large marine organisms. This grouping currently includes the genera Brygmophyceta, Zygophyceta, the infamous Liviatan, and the smallest raptorial, Acrophyceta. The relationships that these animals have to one another are interesting, since they don't actually make up an official or natural grouping. Instead, Brygmophyceta, Zygophyceta, and Acrophyceta are grouped together, while Liviatan is considered slightly more advanced, being positioned in a more derived location within Physeteroidea but they all show signs of being adapted to hunting big animals using big bites and tears. Unlike the living sperm whale, these macroraptorials all had immense conical-shaped teeth on both the lower and upper jaws, whereas today's physeteroids only have functional teeth projecting from the lower jaw. The teeth were also very strongly rooted in the gums of the whales, providing strength to the structures. In addition to the robust teeth, these creatures had many features of the jaws that likely gave them incredibly powerful bites, which would have been necessary in their lifestyles. The temporal fossa, the site of attachment for the temporalis muscle used in moving the lower jaw, is particularly enlarged in these animals compared to the modern sperm whale, and the masseter, another muscle involved in biting, was very well developed too. These characteristics, in addition to another developed masticatory muscle, the pterygoid, and bony growths called buccal exostoses, which probably developed during powerful bites, support the idea that these ancient whales were chomping down forcefully on other animals and tearing out large chunks of them. Although there is currently no direct evidence of this method of feeding, such as bite marks on bones that were unquestionably made by stem physeteroids, or trace fossils of their gut contents such as coprolites, all the anatomies identified in the skulls provide good evidence for this behaviour. Likewise, the robust, recurved, and deeply rooted teeth even had facets or grooves on the sides, which would have enabled them to lock together, probably as the whale gripped onto thrashing prey. All four of these genera also display a key feature shared with living sperm whales, the presence of a supracranial basin on the top of the skull. In the modern animals, this structure houses the spermaceti organ and melon, and so, since all these prehistoric species have them too, it's very likely they were used for the same purpose. The basin extends all the way along the snout in Liviatan, and was particularly deep and wide. It also extends the full way along in Brygmophyceta, whereas in Zygophyceta and Acrophyceta, the basins did not spread over the mouths, giving the appearance of a projecting snout. The physical extent of these mammals would also have facilitated their macroraptorial lifestyles, as their large body size made them capable of taking down a variety of other organisms. The most massive of this grouping was Liviatan, the estimated length of which varies depending on the scaling method used, but potentially measured up to 17.5 metres, similar to the very largest living sperm whales, with full-grown males averaging about 16 metres. These considerable dimensions would have permitted Liviatan to not only compete with Megalodon, which also lived at this time, but also to prey on other large-bodied cetaceans, such as Cetotheriids, and sharks, seals, and many other unfortunate inhabitants of the Miocene oceans would have been at risk of attack. Brygmophyceta and Zygophyceta were pretty similar in size to one another, with Brygmophyceta estimated at 7 meters, and Zygophyceta at 6.5 to 7 meters. While not quite as massive as the leviathan, these sperm whales, armed with their vicious teeth and devastating bites, would still have been formidable predators of other cetaceans, seals, sharks, and smaller fish. Zygophyceta even had mandibular condyles, the bit of bone at the back of the mandible, that were placed particularly low down, likely allowing this whale to open its mouth to a wider degree, and therefore to bite larger animals and take even bigger chunks out of its prey. The fourth genus of macroraptorials, Acrophyceta, was the smallest of these animals, at about 4 to 4.3 meters in length. 
However, this did not stop them from also being highly predatory, terrifying creatures that were capable of devouring a wide range of prey items. There are currently two recognised species within Acrophyceta. These are the type species Acrophyceta dinodon and Acrophyceta robustus. A. dinodon was first named and described in 2008, and the remains of the animal are composed of a skull, mandible and teeth, which were located in a late Miocene deposit in Peru, dating back to around 6 million years ago. The second species was announced in 2016, in a paper that also further analysed the original skull of Acrophyceta and that of Liviatan. Acrophyceta was a pretty distinct looking animal, with a slightly shorter snout compared to the other taxa and a mandible that noticeably curves upwards. The large teeth were packed into this beast's mouth very closely together, and all the signs of raptorial behaviour can be identified in the skull, such as the large temporal fossa for anchoring powerful jaw muscles. The posterior lower teeth were observed to be slightly compressed from side to side too, potentially allowing for the shearing action of flesh. Acrophyceta was found in a formation of rocks known as the Pisco Formation in Peru, and these animals shared their habitat with a variety of other interesting organisms. It's based on this shared environment, and through comparisons of size ratios, that it has been inferred what sort of prey Acrophyceta could have taken, and these include small baleen whales, seals, penguins, perhaps even young megalodon, and marine sloths. The sloth species Thalassochnus natans would potentially have been an ideal prey item for these macroraptorials, and although there is no direct evidence of predation on these animals by Acrophyceta yet, the image of a strange looking sperm whale hunting down another of the most unique mammals to ever exist beautifully illustrates this truly bizarre and fascinating chapter in cetacean evolution, and of the whole evolution of life in general. Once these fearsome, hyper-predatory sperm whales disappeared from our planet's waters a little over 5 million years ago, the niches occupied by these animals, which had previously been held by reptiles such as mosasaurs and plesiosaurs, were partially filled in by orcas. However, since their extinction there has never been anything quite like these awe-inspiring macroraptorial sperm whales again, but what the future holds remains uncertain. Perhaps, one day in a far off time we could see the return of giant, hypercarnivorous cetaceans that terrorised the ocean, as long as they're not all extinct by then of course. Before we end this video, the fantastic animation of Zygophyceta you've been seeing was created by Nature's Compendium. This is a channel focused on creating educational videos about paleontology, and he's recently done an excellent episode on the scientific accuracy of the Jurassic World Mosasaur, which you should definitely go and watch. There will be another animated video about prehistoric sperm whales coming to Nature's Compendium soon, so if you enjoyed learning about them in this video, it would be a good idea to go and subscribe to this channel right now. You can also follow him on Instagram to see previews of his incredible animations. Links to both will be in the description. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you'd like to see more from us.